And um, without any further ado, we're going to take you guys into the game and, um, and yeah, and uh, see what happens. So, I do not know, to, uh, again, just to start things off, I do not know actually what exactly happened in this series. I just got told it was awesome. I just have the games. This is game one, game two, game three, game four, game five, game six, game seven. So, I don't actually know even know if there's seven games though because I made sure the guy sent me seven replays no matter what I, I asked him to. So, hopefully he actually did. Um, so I don't know what happens here. Um, so this should be really exciting. And we're actually going to start with our pros player in the upper right hand corner from Cascade. Here's the blue pros player, Adominus. So he's starting up here in the upper right hand corner. Now, Cascade, we're doing. Like, so. So. So well. And then last week, Red Bloods were like, pow, pow, pow. And they took them down in an ace match. So now Cascade sits in second place in Group B. And uh, with a 4-1 match score. Until then, until last week, they had only dropped one map in four matches. So, um, so yeah, they were doing really well. And Donovan has been the kind of all colour of a lot of teams up until now. Their opponents today are Startill. And his uh, first opponent uh, down here is Legend. Here in the lower left-hand corner. Startill haven't had the best of starts themselves. Um, a forfeit against MIA because they got the wrong time. Um, gra uh, loss against Gravity as well. They've not had the best of starts and they're not doing as well as I'm pretty sure the majority of people would expect Star Tail to do. So it's so important for them to probably win against Cat. Then you know, these next few weeks are so important because first of all they've got to play against Cascade and then Red Bloods. And they're the two top teams. So if they can take down the two top teams, if they can do that, then that's Great, that's so, so good for them in the long run here. If they can take down the top two teams, yes, fantastic. 10 out of 10, maybe they're still in with a chance to make the playoffs. It becomes a lot easier for them from that point. So um, we have had an engineering bay block here. We've got Reaper on the way across the map. And um, Reaper comes uh, into the... Uh, so yeah, Zelda's uh, setting down engineering bay. Reaper comes across the map and uh, we'll just scout around a little bit. Sees two gases here early on. Not too surprising considering there's an engineering bay block. Cancels that at the last moment. Uh, Nexus will come down here still for Dominus. So Dominus is just going to be expanding here very early on. This Reaper will be able to spot this in a moment or two. Uh, just leaving that sitting around for a moment. But uh, we'll now start cutting away and get a little bit of damage onto this Zealot. And um, yeah, these, this Reaper is just going to keep on backing off. So um, Command Center is coming down the low ground. A couple of barracks have been added on as well. So the Legend not going to play around with any kind of factory play. He's just going to go straight into, a, uh, straight into this bio play right from the get-go here. So... Um, so yeah, straight away going into this <laughs> in the middle list. Oh my god, 24 hours. Boo, I know. Such a shocker, right? To be fair, I, I don't enjoy... I usually don't enjoy casting things from replays, but some series, you just you just have to, right? You just have to for some series. Randall, you were so impressed when I played Dropkick Murphys and now this. Well, some, some of my music... I actually don't even like that song. Um, I think I, it was in my head for like a day, so I put it on my playlist. And uh, yeah, it just it just shuffled onto it, unfortunately. Uh, shout out to uh, where uh, Reruia, uh, the guy whose name I butchered beforehand. I'm butchering it again here, um, hitting the follow button on Twitch. So thank you for that. Um, this Reaper moving around the back of this base and will be trapped in by these buildings at the back. So this people will die, but he spotted the Stargate here, which has gone Oracle halfway out. So I mean, a Stargate. Is very common if you know Dominus's playstyle. He loves to play Stargate kind of games. Honestly, we're probably going to see Phoenix Colossi out of him because he really loves that composition. So um, that's what I'm expecting to see out of him. This has been a fairly quick Oracle. He's only just started his warp gate now. So whether that was a mistake or not, I mean, I think it must have been a mistake because he's got so much gas saved up. Yeah, it feels as though he's almost forgotten that for a little bit. So, um, anyways, Oracle coming across the map and uh, we'll be looking to do a little bit of damage. An engineering base about to finish, so turret should come in here pretty quickly, I would imagine. Unless uh, Legend feels as though he's got enough to just be able to hold on, and he, he should. He's got Marines in the main, he's got Marines in the natural. So let's see where this Oracle is going to decide to go and see where uh, what's going to end up happening. If it's going to come to the right hand side here, and we'll start to commit onto these SCVs. Gets two kills, and uh, we'll loop around, try and get a couple more. Gets uh, his third, no, actually getting denied there. So it's still just two kills on this Oracle right now. As, um, okay, now it gets in there and actually goes up to five kills. Wow, all of a sudden jumping up there. Uh, Simpak on the way here for Legend. He starts up a factory as well. An Immortal and a Robo Bay on the way for Dominus. So that Robo Bay on the way here. 
And uh, Dolomus is going to be heading into this. Uh, uh, very sure. Uh, Dolomus is going to be heading into the rest of his game very shortly with this uh, Colossi play on the way. No Phoenix yet, but I'm still not putting it past Dolomus to uh, start up Phoenix at some point. Stimpak's about to finish, plus one's halfway done for our town play as well. And uh, no force just yet for Dominus and well there's a second Stargate, so yes guys, we are gonna be seeing some Phoenix coming uh here very, very shortly. So um a couple of uh Stargates coming in. Uh so Phoenix coming again gonna be on the way here soon. Uh Oracle doing a good job of kinda of just staying alive up to seven kills now. Uh two Marines and five SCVs, it's pretty okay. He's actually got a thirteen worker lead, so he's really been focusing on those probes. As uh first Colossus does start up in the robotics facility. So, uh, first Colossus on the way. Zealot just sitting in front of this Nexus, and um, and yeah, Phoenix production now just begins. That's what we've been kind of waiting for for some time here. So as that second Stargate finishes, he goes straight into his Phoenix production, and um, yeah, this, uh, this Oracle just gonna fly around for now. I'm not actually doing all too much, just uh, keeping the map control. And uh, trying to keep any eye eyes on his Terran opponent because he hasn't actually uh, gone observer yet, right? No, so his uh, scouting basically is completely this um, Oracle, which is going to pick up another kill. Uh, but that's going to be it, and it will actually now go down. So that's a little bit scary because now he has no real vision out on the map. Um, he knows the time of the Medivlax, though, so he knows what sort of time this is going to be coming towards him. He saw the uh, starport lifting onto their reactor, so he knows about 11 minutes or so. He's going to have some bio and Medivlax coming towards his doorstep. Um... Yeah, so Legend just uh, sitting at the front here with, these, um, with this group of units. A uh, little probe here is uh, looking to see what he can maybe get up to. Um, just sitting around for now though. Uh, looks like this was the probe actually just started the third base for Donald. So Donald is taking a very quick third base actually. I mean, considering his PVT, generally the Pros plays the, the play is he's a little bit slower in taking that third base. Um, usually that is the case. Um, in this scenario though, he's playing with no upgrades, which, which is standard for Phoenix Colossi. I guess, I guess he feels very safe with it because, you know, he's got the Phoenix and they, they completely deter drops into the main. So it's actually quite, it's very, very easy for him to be able to be like, okay, cool, right, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And, and basically just hold on and um, and be able to just sit at the third base with his um, army because there's no drops getting past these Phoenix. Now, um, should clear out the tower and he will clean out the tower here. So Zealot goes down and uh, watch tower taken. Phoenix going to be uh, sitting around here, still just waiting for drops maybe coming in. Uh, third Colossus is, oh, sorry, fourth Colossus is up on the, on the way in the production tab. But Forge being add-on here, so again, Phoenix Colossus, you're basically you're saying instead of upgrades, I'm going to be making, um, instead of upgrades, I'm going to be making Phoenix. So um, that's where his gas is going instead of upgrades. So the upgrades are going to be much later here. Now, I have to say, this is looking like an SCV pull from Legend. There's no third base just yet. Um, you know, he, he's just got... He's just got what's on the map right now. He's starting up. Uh, he's got double starboard, double reactors. So he's going to go into a lot of Vikings. I don't know how I really like SCV pulls against Phoenix Colossi. Because the Phoenix can do such a good job of working down the Vikings to let the Colossi survive. And then, um, and then I mean, afterwards, if, if you have a bit of bio left over, the Phoenix just go absolutely ham picking it all up. Now, this dropship, these two dropships are, could be so detrimental to Legend's long-term game plan here. Because if he flies these straight into the Phoenix, that's going to be 20 supply of units. He loses for nothing. Now he scans. What does he see? He sees the Phoenix. Okay, are they in the scan? Oh, oh yeah, okay. It's quite hard to see there. So they are in the scan, so he actually does move away. He doesn't lose, lose that dropship, which is very important, again, to uh, keep that alive. More Phoenix on the way. More Colossi on the way as well. Up to four out on the map and the fifth in production. As uh, as Legend still holding the map control here, he takes down hallucination. Uh, looks like he might. Uh, he was engaged and take down another zealot as well. Supply is pretty even. One one finish for our Terran player. Fleet beacon on the way. In fact, for our Protoss. Dolomus again very limited map con uh, limited uh, scouting. He hasn't actually scouted all game for a long, long time since that Oracle was about. Uh, so he doesn't know about the lack of a third base of opponent. He's got no idea that this is again so well again right now 100% going to be an SCV pull. I really would have liked with the lateness of this um, SCV pill, I really would have liked to see Ghost Sud. I mean, free Ghosts are so huge. Land them on the shields of the Protoss player, or just land them on the Phoenix, so they, they're completely useless. Either works out quite well, but uh, Legend not uh, going for that here. Phoenix is actually going to uh, come around and start scouring, and this is where Dominus is going to find out that, hey, you don't have a third base? Well, I better get uh, ready to defend, because I'm going to be under a lot of pressure very, very shortly. 
Here come the boys! Pretty much every single SCV is coming across the map right now. This Phoenix spots it. And, um, I mean, he knows it's coming, so immediately here, what is Adonimus going to do? Let's see, uh, let's go in first person view and see what he's doing. So, he's actually already got three cannons on the high ground here. He walks in a couple of sentries to be able to get, um, a couple of force fields on that ramp, hold this off for a little bit longer. He doesn't know what direction his opponent's coming in from. Adds more cannons to his natural, so it looks as though that's where he's going to be defending from as the SCVs come forward. And here we go, Legend. He needs to drop the fair stim pack, and there we go. These uh, Vikings are doing the correct, are doing the right thing. They're moving forward. They're taking down Colossi, um, but they're going down quite quickly as well. A lot of bio here still, though, and uh, Legend's going to keep on moving forward. Is it going to be enough though? A sentry gets taken down. More Phoenix available, and them lifts are going to be so so important. As the Colossi here still five Colossi did just deal with this bio. Vikings are going to go down, and Legend, he's uh, going to kill off a lot of probes, but he's lost all of his SCVs as well. Another Colossus comes out, and Legend is going to lose all of his army there. Phoenix begin to lift, and Legend types out GG, and that is going to mean that Cascade actually take the 1-0 advantage in this best of three, seven between Startail and Cascade. Guys, we're going to go into quick commercial break. When we come back, game number two between Cascade and Startail will be on the way. I can let you know right now, it's going to be a PvP between Stun and Dominus. as Stun is going to look to even up this series between Startail and Cascade. So guys, be right back. I'm just casting from replays here today. Uh, this match was played yesterday and I was unable to cast because I had other commitments. So uh, we just cast it from replays. Um, so yeah. Uh, give me a quick moment, because uh, I have actually forgot to stop locally recording, so I have to make a quick note to myself that I accidentally included the music to this, um, I accidentally included the music to this thing, so that I have to edit it out, etc, etc. Anyways, um, how is everyone doing? Hope you're all doing well. We are going into our next series right now, guys. It, uh, next series, our next game. Game number two between Cascade and Startail. Uh, and let's just go into it. So um, we're going to actually be starting once again with our Cascade player in the lower right hand corner. Winner of that last game holding off the SEV pole. In blue, it is a Dominus. Just letting uh, the stats sink in there, Cascade on such a kill streak until Red Bloods put a stop to it all, all thanks to Ignite last week. This could be a rough couple of weeks for Cascade from, you know, not even dropping a, you know, dro only dropping a single map to then, you know, going up losing to Red Bloods and now Star Hill, you know, they're not an easy opposition despite, you know, they've not had the best of starts this season at all. But they're still not an easy opposition. Right now for Star Hill in the upper left hand corner, we've got the pink Protoss player. It is Stun. Alright, so that's what's going on up here in the upper right left hand corner. So PvP, we're going to see what these guys want to get up to. We've seen a lot of, I think every game on Pink King's Age on Station today has actually been PvP. So, quite interested to see uh, what this is going to, ha uh, how this is going to go. And uh, Gateway actually comes down here for uh, stun so gateway comes down and um, and yeah gateways for both players and a simulator coming down for Dominus as he um, <coughs> oh my god my throat as uh, he begins to take his gas and uh, the gas time is very similar from both of these players so not much differences to go on so far now pretty much every game so far we today has involved one player going blink um, in fact, you know, so far we've actually had Blink versus Blink, and then we've had Blink versus Stargate into DTs. So, um, Blink seems very popular on King's Age One Station. I think it's very popular build in the matchup in general. Um, but maybe something to keep our eyes out on for here as we go into this game. Guys, how are we all doing in the chat? Uh, we've got a couple guys chatting. We've got Mick Dalto in here as always. How are you doing? Thank you for tuning in again, as you always do. Randall still chatting away, having fun. Guys, where are the rest of you? Come on, what, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Come on, let's, let's hear it. Who are you guys supporting? Who are you guys cheering for? Who do you guys want to see play here in this series? Please no spoilers if you've already seen it. Um, yeah, do let us know. So, um, you know, get active in the chat. We love it when you get active in the chat. It's always good. It's fun. And, um, and yeah, so uh, this probe is actually running around right now for a Dominus. And... Um, we have a probe coming into the main base as well for stun, so um, 
Both players just uh, scouting out their opponents a little bit. Stargate coming down for Dominus. Now that doesn't surprise me one single bit because again, I said it in the last game, I'll say it again here, he absolutely loves his um, Stargate play. We saw it in the last game and again, I mean we're going to see it here. So we'll see how he wants to open, whether it's just an Oracle, whether he's going to go into Phoenix as well or just the Phoenix. So um so yeah, the uh, probe is uh, scattered out here. Stun does throw down Twilight Council. Uh, where is that? Right at the top of the side. Did Adonis spot that? Yes, he did. So Adonis has seen this coming. So Adonis had actually had a... <coughs> Excuse me. Adonis has actually had a really good scout here to start this off. Um, this is really nice for him. He's actually going to go straight to Phoenix. Um, which I kind of feels a nice option when you go up against a Twilight Council, which is likely going to be Blink, because... With the Oracle, you know, they leave some Stalkers in the main and you can't do anything and then Photon Overcharge just, you know, keeps you away as well. Whereas with the Phoenix, you can, um, first of all, lift up the, your opponent's first Stalker and uh, maybe get very close to killing it off. I'm surprised he's not pulling his Mothership Core. I guess he's uh, a little bit worried in case um, something else happens. I'm surprised he actually didn't um, run it past. If he'd actually started running the Stalker past uh, while Stutter 7 and attacking, he, oh, he gets it anyway. Wow, really nice opening from Adonis here. Great little start to this game. So, um. So, yeah. Why is this still tight? A stream title? Uh, Commons Esports. Um. Still Commons Esports versus uh, Skillforge because I'm an idiot and I'm really bad at updating my stream title. <laughs> that, that That's why. No other reason. Uh, Phoenix is actually going to find a probe over here, uh, which is pretty nice. Great start of the game from uh, Adonis. Now, we have Dark Shrine on the way, and this could very well be a response to having seen a Phoenix first out of that Stargate. So, Stun is saying, well, I don't believe you're going to have detection out, or at least not immediately, so I'm going to try and abuse that. I mean, the problem with that thought process is, I mean, it's so likely that Adonis here is going to scout this. Um, okay, maybe not, because it's actually hidden right to the bottom left of the map, so... Um, this could work out, but a robot facility on the way, so and, I mean, an observer's not going to be that far away at all here for Adonis. As uh, Stun is going to get these DTs out here very, very shortly. So, um, so yeah. Phoenix scouting around still for Domus. He has not spotted that left hand side where the Dark Shrine is just yet. And, ooh, does he really? Oh no, he's got an observer out. Okay, he does have an observer. Where is it? It's in his mineral line. So he's prepared for everything. I mean, he's just basically said. I know you open Twilight, you could be going Blink, you could be going Dark Templar, I'm going to prepare for both and just play defensively, uh, get Immortals out, I mean the Robo is the answer to everything because, you know, he can get Immortals to defend Blink, he can get an Observer to defend the DTs, and um, that's exactly what we're seeing right now, out of, um, out of Adominus, so, <clears throat> Adominus basically just covering all possible routes here. As uh, this uh, phoenix is just about going to get away. So, um, so yeah, phoenix just going to get away right now. Dark Templars try and come in, but they uh, get denied pretty quickly. Uh, not a single kill on them. And actually morph into an Archon um, to fight with these Stalkers. Actually, Stun coming forward here. And he might be able to do a bit of damage, but Phoenix can lift up four of these Stalkers, and that's a lot of them. Uh, the blink is used there. I think Morphin into an Archon was very small because the Phoenix otherwise would have just lifted up the DTs. That was some really nice decision making there very quickly there by Stun. Um, he is still being very aggressive. I don't really like this. I think he should get away because there's two Immortals here. He's going to go for it. But I mean, we said this before. The Phoenix can lift up four of these Stalkers. And that's what we're seeing right now. A lot of these Stalkers taken down. The Archon goes down as well. More pickups here. And Stun will just continue to lose these units. And that is not how this should have gone. And now Adonis. Opens up an opportunity to counterattack here potentially because Stun just lost a lot of units. Um, the army supplies are way in favor of Adominus here, who's now going to clean out a pylon as well. Stun's got a Nexus up and he's holding, I mean, he's not even holding a worker lead, so both players have a Nexus up. But Adominus is just so far ahead, he's like 20 army supply ahead, he's got immortals out. Um, all Stun has going for him is Blink, but he's just lost a ton of stalkers. Now he's only got, well, he's got seven stalkers on the map, and that is it to fight with. And that is, um,. And that is, I mean, that's that's not good at all. I'm not going to lie to you guys. So, um, that's not good at all. And there's a Voidray actually coming out as well for Dominus. So Dominus looking as though he might just be building up to an attack very soon. I mean, if, if, he, if he wasn't going to attack soon, he would probably right now be saying, right, uh, here's the plan. I'm going to, um, here's the plan. I'm going to do this. And uh, basically he would say, I'm going to 
build a forge, start getting more upgrades, take my extra gases, keep taking up, Robo Bay, 10 blockers, that kind of thing. Instead, he just uses what he has right now. He doesn't take his gases, he doesn't get a forge, and he's just gonna go for it. He knows he's at an advantage, he knows he killed off a ton of his units, uh, a ton of his opponent's units, and, um... And yeah, so Adonis is coming across the map right now. And uh, these units are looking to come in very, very shortly. And um, I, I just don't really see Stun holding on. He's got, what, a handful of Stalkers? He's desperately trying to get an Immortal out of his Rover facility. I just mean, how, how, how does he do anything here? Stalkers get lifted up here by the Phoenix straight away, and I mean, Adonis just walks right into the base. Blink will try and come down. He's going to try and do whatever he can, but here come the Voyagers from behind as well. And I mean, he just kills the whole army in a matter of seconds, and Stone, what can he do? What can he do? Mothership Core falls. Adonis is just going to take the game, and I mean, that was possibly some of the worst casting I've ever done. Um, in all honesty, I'm not going to lie, that was some pretty abysmal casting, but, um, Game 2 goes to Adonis and Cascade, and all of a sudden, Star Tail look as though they're going to continue this kind of repetitiveness throughout the season, where they just don't seem to be able to cut it. And now that you are down against Adonis, I mean, they've only used Legend and, um, Stun. Um, hang on, let me check who's actually up next. Game 3. Oh, okay, okay. Game 3 will be life coming out for Startail. So, apparently, maybe this is the part where the series just turns around and Startail end up 4 2. Um, okay, it's going to be life versus Adonis on Catalina. I've got nothing more to say to you guys other than stay tuned because we'll be back after this quick commercial break with Game 3 with life. Um, so, yeah, I just started the local recording. So, basically, if you're watching on YouTube, um, or a rebroadcast guys, we just had a power cut, so I'm not sure if we still have the first half of this game, which is between Life and Adominus, but um, if it's there, then it's there, if it's not there, it's not there, um, and that's why you've missed the start. It was a little bit interesting, Life did open with 14-14, uh, he went straight into kind of, uh, he's been, uh, he's actually killed the nexus of, uh, the natural nexus of Adominus, and Adominus is actually in, pretty, in a lot of trouble, I would imagine. Um, we're just loading back into the replay right now. Um, I'll show you guys the screen. Oh, don't say it's not going to show StarCraft. Life was given such a hard ass pounding to Dominus. Says C3 to real. Well, there you go, guys. There is your summary of what you missed if you did miss the game. Um, so, as you can see, we're attempting to get in game, um, but something doesn't want us to. Um, okay, come on. Why is it so slow? Ah! There we go. Oh, okay. Deep breaths. Relax, relax, relax. Okay, so we'll just run through this on uh, speedy mode. Um, because I don't want to skip, because I don't want to see how long the game is, because that would be a little bit of a spoiler. So we'll just run through this on four times so you guys can get a general gist of this. If you just watched it, then I'm sorry. Um, uh, come on. Uh, so as you can see, open with his gas, open with his pool. Dun 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 dun. This is the EU server, guys, so I don't think it's that much of a surprise that life is in Platinum. Because he probably doesn't play here very often. I'm just going to leave the screen here, because this is basically where everything happens. <clears throat> so we can just remind ourselves of what's going on. Excuse me. So we got to about this bit, right? Um, we're just going to go from here then. 
just after he lost the Nexus, I think. Oh, he lost his pylons, so he got past this bit, okay. Um, and he was fighting here, okay. I think we're about here. So, guys, let's go back into the game and start describing what the fuck's going on. So, life is going to kill off this zealot here with his zerglings, and uh, then he's going to be able to t uh, just turn away very quickly, actually, to um, uh, turn back to his reinforcements. He is actually droning back at home. So he's uh, going to get some, uh, you know, he's keeping his economy going. He has started up this third base as well. So he's actually going to head into a mid game here. He has taken a worker lead. And Donimus is a bit of trouble because how does he ever really move down this ramp? I mean, he doesn't have that many units. Um, I mean, the Zerglings are going to struggle to fight with the Zealots and to trade evenly with them. But in general, it's still going to be kind of tough. So um, a Sentry and a Zealot warp in here. And, uh, I mean, he's just going to have to very slowly push his way over. He's making a robo facility to try and kind of, you know, to give him something in this game. But still, I mean, it's going to be very, very tough. He will be able to re-expand. Life is going to give him that. He will uh, just back off for now and let him take that expansion. So, um, yeah, he, he does now turn around. He's, he's making a road throw and he's just getting everything up. He's getting his lair up. I mean, it's a bit of a weird game. It's not been, it's not gone the way we'd usually expect his ZVP to go. I was saying earlier today, what, what was I saying earlier today? I was like, ah. Oh, Man, ZVP, it's so... It, every every game is just the same at the start. Well, not if you have life playing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, right now we have an Overlord coming into the base to scout for life. He will actually be able to spot this Robo facility. Uh, which is actually Corona Boost not an Immortal, so... I don't know if Adam's doing this for safety or just, he, just because he feels like he needs to all in sometime soon. Um, most likely going to be the latter. So, um... So yeah, we've got um, this phoenix is flying away, flying home, and um, and yeah, this phoenix is flying home. What the fuck am I talking? I've been, I'm so put off. Arrgh! Okay, right. So, this a phoenix is gonna come across the map and uh, get a little bit of scouting done. There's not too much to see. I guess the hydrus dens on the way down. That is what Domus does. Just click on there. So. He swaps the Hydra's Den, which is going to be very hard for him to deal with because he's a very long way away from Colossi or any kind of splash damage. So that's um, he's a he's a long way from that. As a this uh, immortal is second immortal now on the way. I mean, Hydra's are such a great way to deal with immortal lens, and it looks as though that's what we're basically seeing from Adonis here. Unless he's literally just getting these for safety. But I mean, he's positioned outside of his natural. It looks as though he's just going to go soon. I think he might just go with two immortals and uh, the warp prism. Um, Rest in peace, he is. I'm sorry. Uh, some force wheels come down here and actually cast, uh, catch the um, catch a few of these zigglings. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't think it'd actually be so loud. Fuck me, right? This game is like a complete write-off. This this entire this entire cast of this game. I think we'll just omit this one from. Um, it's life trying to do something for these Zerglings right now, but um, not quite able to. And, um, well, Domus is going to try and move through the middle of the map. Um, life's already building up a Roach Hydra army, though. I mean, I mean, more and more Hydras coming out here, and there's just nothing to deal with Hydralisks. Force fields are basically going to be his only hope, but is there even going to be enough of them? I mean, there's a fair few sentries here. But is there going to be enough other stuff, even? Uh, he's getting up to seven gateways, so I mean, he's kind of getting to that kind of economy, but... There's just so many Hydralisks, more and more in production. And um, they're just going to keep on coming, so Guardian Shield comes in here. A couple of Force Wheels come down, so this does block a few of them out. Uh, good Force Wheels to begin with, I would say. Uh, but a lot of these uh, sentries are going down, so the remaining Force Fields are, well, more or less going to be non existent. And life just has so much stuff. And, well, I mean, Adonis' army just absolutely evaporates. Doesn't even seem to stick around for a couple of moments. And um, does uh, just kind of disappear into nothingness so life put star tail onto the uh, scoreboard something they've definitely needed here because they were um... so yeah that was definitely put rocks and um, I f definitely did not forget to press record again man my mind's a little bit out of it I'm sorry guys um, so for YouTube viewers you missed a little bit of an interesting start Hatchery on the low ground instead of in base for the hatchery first, and he's now taking his third hatchery inside. And complainers open with three command centers very quickly, all gasless. So, um, sorry about that, guys. If you're watching on YouTube or the rebroadcast, um, I forgot to press record. It's as simple as that. 
Um, so these things actually get speed, but enough marines here to be able to move back and uh, life keeping all of his zergans alive. Yet to actually lose anything here in this game. Um, he will have something on his resources lost because he went for an extractor trick at the start. Um, but yeah, just a very slow start here. Now he actually has gone back into gas mining. He starts up a bane nest quite quickly here. 16 more lings on the way too. So if he makes more lings with the next round of lava, which is right now, then we're probably going to see an all-in, and okay, yes we are. So, I mean, the Bane and could have been a very early defensive Bane and because he's not too sure what his opponent's doing, because he's not really scoured. Um, but he's now going to just go for it. He's going to go for this... Um, he's just going to go for it. He's going to go for it all-in. He's going to morph in a ton of Bane lanes. And this is the problem. Complain is playing extremely greedily. He's gone up to only a second barracks. Now he's going to add on double engineering bay. His bunker is part of the wall, and that's the only bunker he has. First two Hellions are being chased back here. And uh, life will now pull back. He needs to kind of hide these links somewhere so you can morph in the Bane lanes. And uh, that's going to be right over to the left-hand side here. So Bane lanes should be on the way right now. Um, these uh, these Hellions are just sitting around still. Uh, I'm oh, just moving out now. Uh, he's not too sure where exactly he wants to go. Another couple of Hellions on the way. If these Hellions get caught, that would be so detrimental. Even if they just move across the map, that could also be detrimental. Complain for us down, he's scanned. What does he see from the scan? He scans the third hatchery, so he actually sees a bane nest here. He was already added on a bunker though, so what does he expect? Okay, well now he definitely expects an all-in as more bunkers come down. Is he going to be able to hold on? Because guys, the Balins are right here already. And you know what? There's just nothing to put in the bunkers. Okay, there's actually a bunch of Marines and Marauders over here, but you know, that's not, that's not great. They should probably be next to the bunkers and... I think this is just cut. I think complainers just spotted this a few seconds too late because he's just not been able to prepare, you know, get his units in position and everything else. These Hellions are kind of his only hope right now. Uh, two more are about to pop out. He's desperately trying to micro them, but there's so many Zergans left over. Bane lanes are kind of all over the place still. Lings actually catch them. Hellions which just come out. The Hellions are actually still around here in the natural, but it looks like there's only one left and the Zergans are ripping apart these uh, CVs. And I think complainers just been completely broken here. He saw this coming way too late. And life pulls out the all-in, complain types out the GG, and game number four very quickly goes towards Startail and life, and allows life to even up this best of seven all-kill. So, what happens next? Best of seven all-kill, and now we're going into game number five. Next player out, well, do you guys reckon it's going to be Demarga, or do you reckon it's going to be Cass? Because I reckon they're the two players Cascade brought to this match as their backup players, because I don't think they came to this match underprepared. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I it's going to be Demarga up next. I don't know if, um, I don't know if Cass will, li will be used. Um... But I have to assume if Demarga loses, then it will be Cass, right? Like, they didn't come to play against Startail thinking like, Oh yeah, we're gonna just bring out a B team. And they they made sure their best players were here. Like, I'm pretty sure of it. So, Demarga's up next for ZVZ against Life. After that, we're gonna be going into whatever game is next. Whether it be um, the match point for Startail or the match point for Cascade. Guys, we'll be back in a few moments' time with game number 5. Don't go too far. If you enjoyed the stream, hit the follow button. Uh, this is casted... This case, uh, these games are replays, guys. The matches were played yesterday, uh, but we couldn't cast it live because uh, we had other commitments and other things to cast. So, matches tonight are from replays. He's the only player to take maps off of Cascade here today. And we're going to go into the next game where we are going to be introducing first the player in the upper right-hand corner. It's the Red Zerg. It's Demarga. Everyone loves Demarga, right? Been a long time since I casted Demarga. I think the last time I casted Demarga was probably back when he was playing in the Winter League, back in January or February or so. So, so yeah, uh, here we are in the upper right hand corner. It is Demarga from Cascade, and he is looking to take his team onto match point by stopping the current streak of the player in the lower left. It is in the teal, Startail Life. So, um, yeah, very excited to see what this game is going to bring us, as we have a 9 pool from life, so he's keeping up with this aggressive style, which he's played basically all, well, a a every single game so far. So, um, so yeah, um, n 9 pool coming in here for life, he's going to be aggressive on Foxtrot Labs, a bit of a weird map. I kind of feel as though Damaga may be using this map up so that 
in in a mirror matchup so that if he falls um if he falls whoever has to come out and then would eventually have to win two maps in a row then wouldn't have to play on this map which could be a benefit if it's not going to be a mirror matchup say if cast does come out next you know if that was to happen then at least cast can play on you know not this map which isn't exactly the best map around really so um I don't know, maybe that's the choice to pick here. DeMarco opens with a hatchery first, so immediately this isn't looking good for him, considering this was a 9 pool from life. Um, I mean, DeMarco's not going to spot this until these lings are running across the map. You know what, I'm not even sure. Is this Overlord going to spot the lings coming out of the natural? I think it might miss them. I think he might be completely blind to this for a long, long time. Let's follow these Zergans as they do pop out here, guys. So, six Zergans coming across, and they, I mean, the Overlord's not going to spot them. He's going to miss them, so that's absolutely huge right now. DeMarco... Okay, life's actually going to run into the range of the Overlord, so he actually runs in here. So Demarga does see this, he sees the Lings on the way, but his pool is not even halfway done. He cancels his gas here as soon as possible. Now, what he's probably going to want to do is pay, you know, leave this hatchery on the low ground as long as possible. Cancel it as soon as it gets very low, or at the last possible second. He could leave it alive if he wanted to buy time with it, but canceling it is, you know, works as well, because then you can get Lings, Queens, and spine crawlers all at the same time. So... Life comes in here, he's going to go straight up into the main base, he's not going to waste time with the natural expansion at all. He sees the hatchery first, so he knows he's got plenty of time, and oh, he's going to go for the uh, swan pool there, but decides not to. Uh, goes for drones instead, and Demarg actually losing one drone there initially. He's about to lose a second as well, and Life is just doing so much damage with this. Four lings and a queen on the way for Demarg. He lets his natural expansion finish. Oh no, well now he's got eight lings on the way, using that lava from the low ground as well. And as uh, these lings are just slowly picking away wherever they can, they're looking to surround the lings when they pop out here. A few more drones going down for Demarga, it's now 12 drones against 10 in favour of Demarga still. But of course, uh, life with more zerglings on his uh, on his opponent's side of the map at the moment, uh, will be looking to keep uh, getting them kills in there. He's actually expanding back at home, five more drones on the way as well. So life looking to expand, he will lose these zerglings, how much more damage can he get done? Well... Now he kills off a couple more drones. He actually takes a couple of workers' lead for a moment, but now he just ends up with a one worker lead. And, um, yeah, both players have a queen out. It's actually a fairly, fairly even scenario because Demarga keeps his natural expansion alive. And by keeping his natural expansion alive. Well, yeah, I mean, by keeping his expansion alive, both players are just dead even, really. 17 drones to 18, life starts up a second queen first. Demarga has lost more, 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 he's got more in the resources lost tab, but that's because, but that's okay, because he's actually been mining a little bit more as well, because he had a few more drones in life for a longer time, so it's one of these weird scenarios where these guys are actually going to come out in a very similar position. Life, you know, falls behind in drones for a couple of seconds here, but he's got more drones on the way than Demarga, so he'll get back into that lead very, very shortly. Um, Lings continue to chase the Lings right now, and uh, Demarga just continuing to retreat. Uh, going to get back all the way to his natural. There's only four Lings here for life. He does actually start up speed. That's something which Demarga's going to be a little bit uh, slower um, in terms of he's going to have that speed coming up a little bit slower than life has. Um... So yeah, that speed's going to be a little bit slower. A couple of lings here for life, just going to back off for now. And uh, thinking about coming back in. No, okay, blocked by the queen. Queen just fends them away. Bane nest as well for life. So he's really going to ramp up the aggression here. 14 more lings, so he wants to go for the kill. He just wants to go for this. Get Demarga down nice and quickly, as fast as he can. So Ling Bane on the way here for life. Now Demarga, he has kept in gas himself, so he's going to have his own Bane and nest very, very shortly. Hits 50 gas right now, so now's the time to throw it down. So he's not going to be too far away from having Bane of his own. The real issue is, does he have enough lings? He is starting to make Zergans, so it's going to come down to a Ling Bane war. Both players will have lings, both will have banes. It's going to come down to who can control them better right now. And, um, well, more ling lings starting to come out a little bit here. Where a couple of lings just heading back away for life. Uh, speed's about to kick in for him, so he might have a little bit of an opportunity to pick off a few of these Zergans, which are being a little bit too adventurous for Demarga. Demarga, um, they're going to try to cut these off, but... Um, these uh, Lings for Life will be able to cut these down. And so goodbye, Zerglings. So these Zerglings go down and uh, Life will be able to uh, just continue chasing these. So um, a couple of Lings will fall. And uh, that's not a good start for Demarga, of course. He is six workers ahead, so if he can defend here, that's great for him. But Life, with a sudden swell of Zerglings, Demarga doesn't have speed yet. He's got five Bailings on the way. He loses his Queen at the natural. And all of a sudden, he's in a lot of trouble. He's got Bailings morphing in, but are they going to get here in time? Life with some Bailings as well. Only two, though. 
As uh, he forces his way up the ramp, and in fact, life just has Balance all over the place, but Balance coming in for Demarga. Not quite able to connect just yet. Two Balance or two Balance so far. More Balance coming in here for Demarga, and it looks as though he's doing okay. He has lost a lot of drones. He's only five workers behind. It's recoverable right now. As, um, are they alive? Oh, I think, oh my god, I can't. I think they're alive, Balins, but they're all going to get cancelled here. He's still got drones down, uh, sorry, Zerglings down in the natural, and more Balins on the way in. Uh, Balin connects with the, uh, uh, with the, uh, spawning in Balins. I don't think that was the best option there. These extra Balins for life are going to be so, so huge. And they're just all rallied in towards the main base to go for that drone line. How much damage can life get done with this? Abandoned for Demarga is not really able to reach anywhere. These uh, dr uh, drones have to start splitting now. Demarga, how much damage will he take? There's a couple of drones to the right, uh, to the left, sorry, and a couple of drones to the right. Now down by 10 workers, and life's just keeping on spamming links. He sees an advantage, and he is looking to press it. And Demarga is in a lot of trouble. He's down workers, he's down army. How does he come back from here? He needs a miracle. A miracle Bailin here to be able to come back from this one, I think. As uh, these uh, Zergers are going to chase back into his base. Demarga turns around once again. He goes in for the fight, but he just doesn't have enough Zerglings to take that fight. His Bailins are coming in, but uh, he's even got drones not mine. It's such a huge mistake right now. And Demarga, he gets a Bailin in here, but he doesn't really connect with anything. And life spawns more Bailins in the base of Demarga. Demarga, what else can he do now? A Bailin comes forward. He's going to go for the drones. Um, Demarga just types out GG. And life takes Startail onto match point in what uh, turned out to be a very quick, which turned out to be a game which... So let us go in and introduce these guys. Uh, in the upper right hand corner guys, we do have the red Zerg player from Startail. It is life. I know you guys are very excited about life, a lot of you life fans out there. Come on, let's hear some cheering, because this game is the hype game. Hopefully we don't just see a Roach Bane all in, as someone said, uh, uh, Zerg for life said, incoming Roach Bane. Hopefully, um, uh, hopefully it's, um, Hopefully it's not, but as I say that, we have a gas first in the pool, so life is going to be playing very aggressive here, so I guess we should get to the point and introduce our blue Terran player in the upper left-hand corner from Cascade. He is Cass. Sanghyun, I think the current prize pool currently sits at... Oh, it's on the Lycopedia. Um, let me... Hang on, I'll just... So there you go, I'll just type it into the chat instead. Helps, uh, makes it easier than... Uh... Trying to say because I can't actually remember. It's like I think we're up to 400 euros for first, 150 for second, and 50 euros for third, or 75 euros for third. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, Reaper on the way here for Cast to start off with. And intrigued to see how this is going to work out for life. I'm assuming this must be some kind of Roach Bane all in, right? Uh, sorry, not Roach Bane, just a Ling Bane all in. Well, he only gets speed, so he's just going to open up with speed here. I mean, where where does it go from here? So I'm intrigued. Let's see what um, Cass is gonna get up to, as he does. Um, as he does, uh, get start this Reaper on the way. So he's got a command center on the low ground immediately here. I mean, he's gonna be in maybe a little bit trouble. This Reaper should run into the Zerglings though, so that's quite fortunate for Cass. If he was going straight to the bottom right, he'd actually miss the Zerglings, and well, he might miss the Zerglings anyway. Okay, life's gonna hide them over to the side a little bit. Um, as soon as he sees this hatchery though. Life is going to be, uh, uh, Cass is going to turn around. He sees how late that hatchery is, and he... Well, has he got a second Reaper on the way? No, he's got a Reactor. I'm a little bit worried. I don't actually understand why life's taking so long to get over here and to, you know, delay this command center, to be honest. And, um... So, yeah, um, Cass doing an okay job here. Um, I mean, I, I just don't understand why life is not yet committing to the Zerglings. I mean... He really, I, I guess, maybe the, he, after the cast scout with the first reaper, I guess, life just said to himself, well, maybe if you're making a second reaper, there's no point now, because you're 100% going to leave her at home. And these links will now try and sneak by into the natural, maybe try and just come in at an awkward time and still try and delay this, but marines are here, well, speed actually comes in, so it's actually timed up to come in with speed, and he does delay it a little bit. Uh, Cass has already invested in a bunker as well, which I think is a very smart decision, because, you know, it's very likely that this game is going to be, um very aggressive from life, so I think a bunker is always going to save you well. Now this uh, Reaper's in a little bit of trouble, he needs to get to that bunker. Another SCP maybe going to go down here, doesn't quite make it to the bunker, so um, life is going to be a little bit annoying here, so nibbling away at this command center, uh, will just be turned away by the Reaper. More links on the way, I mean there's a lot of Zerglings already here for life. 12 more on the way, Banshee, uh, sorry, a Starport on the way, but I'm assuming it's going to be a Banshee here on the way for Cass, as he's actually, life is just going to commit into 
Now, uh, commit onto this bunker. Yes, the Reaper onto the high ground. The Marines will be left on the low ground, of course. They will die. Uh, first Hellion pops out, and that's going to be the beginning of the defensive of a cast. Now, he does still hold a five worker advantage, so it's not the end of the world being forced to lift up here like this with his natural command center. This Reaper might go down. No, he's too good for that. He lets it, uh, keeps it alive, so Reaper falls back. A whole bunch of Zerglings here looking to see what they can maybe get up to. And, um, well, for now, they're just going to be sitting under this command center. Life is going to... I mean, Cass being playing very smartly here. He's not in any, you know, massive rush to break out. He knows he's... This is a big commitment from Life, and he knows... Oh! Wah, that was a little bit of a bait there, and I think Life fell for it. Taking us some huge shots from them Hellions, and now Cass is very confident in being able to uh, come down here. Oh, but more zones coming in, so now Life is kind of being the one who's baiting. Oh, but what a block on this ramp, and surely Life cannot commit through here. He does anyway, but five Hellions remain. The poor Reaper, which has defended for so long, now falls. One Hellion falls, but the rest of them still alive here and continue to kite, and I think he should be able to get away with the rest of these. So the rest of the Zergans go down. A few more Zergans into the natural now. A Banshee is on the way. Is this the first Banshee out? Yeah, so first Banshee out, so this will be the end of this aggression now because the Banshee will just work away on these lings a little bit too quickly. Trying to set up this kind of surround on the Hellions again, uh, but the, you know, Cass predicts it this time, and he, uh, he's been very patient here. Now he has fallen behind in workers, but I still don't think it's that bad. He's got double mule, and now he can start dropping these mules on his natural. He's got Banshees to go harass with, so you can set back the work count a little bit. He's going to force Spore Crawlers out of life as well, because his lairs are a long way away, so he's not going to have detection, so he has to get Spore Crawlers. So I think... Um, I think uh, Cass is kind of okay. I think he's going to pretty much even up in terms of economy. And, um, and yeah. So, we're going to slow down for just a little bit here as this Banshee sits over the top of the natural. Does free will exist? What What is this chat turning into? Booty smack -a -lack. Does free will... That's, that's like a deep question to ask in Twitch chat. Does free will exist? Wow. Two Banshees heading across the map right now for Cass. He is starting up Stimpak quite exciting because it means we're going to see some bio. Uh, we have a bunch of Hellions coming through the middle. Eight Hellions in total. So you really come in a lot to these. Um, may, no Armory though. So no Armory. No third base just yet either. Ling's coming around the side of the map for life. So looking as though he may try and hit some kind of counter attack. Here's the Banshees. Um, are going to target down a spine core. Maybe uh, opening an opportunity to come in here. And um, and open up a pathway for the Hellions as Lings are going to get straight into the natural. So nice run by by life here. He's going to be able to take down this Marine. And he's going to keep coming forward. So Cast is in a little bit of trouble. He's going to start taking some more damage. At the same time though, these uh, Banshees are doing a pretty decent job here. But the Queens will turn it away now. The Overseer will add some additional detection. Hellions turn around and come back. Overall, it's only seven workers killed for life, and we're looking at 38 drones to 36 SCVs. So pretty much probably a Terran advantage considering the mules. So uh, things still looking all right for Cass, I would say. Actually, up about 15 16 supply, which is um, pretty sweet. Okay, so these banshees continue to move around. I believe in Cass, I believe in Terran. A couple of uh, banshees moving around this. Ah, gets the creep tumors. That's pretty nice. Now he's going to come into this natural bus. A lot of links just waiting here, waiting in the back, waiting for the opportunity, and here we go, and life comes in, he leaps on these Hellions, and he's going to get the surround as well, he forces them back into the natural, there's not enough though, so he doesn't keep them here for too long, but he gets some extra damage on them, very expensive though, life is 20 supply down, he has got a Spire on the way, this is a very fast, I mean he's completely skipping upgrades for now, Spire on the way, still two bases, third command center is on the way for Cass as well, 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 Hellions and um, Banshees moving forward here, and uh, the Banshees are going to look to uh, pick off that Queen, and uh, this uh, spine crawler is going to uh, be one of the targets here, he loses a Banshee though to the, one of these Queens, and that's a little bit of a shame there from Cass, uh, these Hellions still just moving around looking to see what they can get up to, uh, not too much just yet though, so uh, just moving around, and uh, just checking around, not too much really happening, I guess he may be I mean, he's not thinking there's a hidden third base or anything. He might be actually... I mean, I guess he's, he's 12 minutes in the game, life's on two bases. I think Cass just wants to reaffirm with himself that, you know, this is actually happening. You know, 10, 12 minutes in the game, he's got life on two bases. Now, though, 11 mutalisks are on the way. And is Cass prepared for this? Well, yes, he is, in fact. Turret in the main base. A few marines here and there. And Widow Mines well placed as well. I mean, Cass, Cass knows what's up. He, he, he knows this is a possibility. Did he see the Spire? Okay, so he did see the Spire. So that's why he's been able to... Uh, react to this so early on so I mean life's gonna get a bit of map control back now he's gonna be able to establish a third base but I mean third orbital already up and running for cast 47 workers apiece now uh, these mutas what can they really get up to 
Um, you know, if anyone can make a comeback with these Mutalisks, it's going to be life. He uh, dives in here, he picks off a Marine, loses a Mutalisk to one of these uh, to a turret, loses a second Mutalisk as well, he's no damage at all. And life, not the most convincing of starts with the Mutalisk play here. Cass has won one about halfway done, so I mean, his, his upgrade lead in this game is going to be absolutely phenomenal for a long, long time. That's definitely going to be something he can use to his advantage. You know, there's going to be huge, huge, huge windows of timings where he can come in here and just basically shut things down and get things done. Now, this is nice for life. He's actually going to catch these, uh, this dropship. Uh, mine is burrowing. Um, uh, life's actually moving away from mine, so that's pretty nice. He's actually going to catch this Banshee coming across to you. Ooh, into the cloaks. Um... So these medevacs are going to reload up, but they're just going to back off into the main base again. So, um, Life not quite able to pull it off. Oh, he's going to get a medevac full of units. Yes, he is. So that's pretty nice for Life. Um, he's maybe even going to get the mine as well. Yes, he will. So this is quite nice. Um, a little bit of a small victory here for Life, and that's the kind of thing he needs. Cass has flown so much money. Um, he needs some extra barracks, some, uh, some more reactors on his barracks, maybe more than anything else. An army finishes up here for him in the moment, so two, two can start. Uh, we do have Hellions coming into this third base, and uh, Mulus will very slowly clean this up, as the Mulus is still dancing around in the main base as well. So these Hellions are going to go down now. Um, a couple of them will escape, but I mean, they're on such low hit points, I don't even know if it's worthwhile unless he, I guess he could morph them into Hellbats and uh, get them healed up by the Medivax. Uh, Cast just going with a pretty standard composition, adds on the factory so he can go into the drill and claws here. 2-2 two, two on the way for him, and of course, with this 2-2, two, two, he opens up so many windows of opportunity. Again, like, you know, he's already got a window now where he's 1-1 one, one and his opponent's 0-0. Zero, zero. In about two minutes, you know, that's going to end in about, you know, 90 seconds or so. But then about a minute and a half after that, he's going to have an opportunity to fight with 2-2 against 1-1 for a long time. So he's got a long time to work with here. Time is really in Cass's favour. He's just setting up very defensively on this third base for now. Setting the mines up, getting the bunker down, getting into position. And um, Mio's going to find this Banshee. Ooh, okay, he is going to find this Banshee. So he's going to catch that Banshee, get rid of that before it causes too much of an issue here. Overseer might go down before the mine gets killed. And uh, it will go down. Life is backing off anyway, so... Lose the Overseer better than a Mutalisk. Uh, oh, he's going to dive back in. He's going to go for the Medivac. Not quite able to. Doesn't lose a Mutalisk, though, so, you know, it's okay for him. Plus one Carapace about a finish. Plus one Melee is still on the way. Centrifugal Hook. So, life's getting into the swing of the game. He's recovering from what was definitely a deficit he had early on. Um, somehow, some way, he's found a way. As, uh, we, as, you know, life finds a way. Whatever. Um, so, okay. So, Mutas are going to come in towards the main base. Uh, the army for Cass coming into the middle of the map though, I mean 2-2 two -two is coming in here very shortly, ah, life loses a fair few links here and that's not good, turning around with his mutalisks, he's going to try and come and engage this army now, so if you hooks is about a minute away, his plus one's about 20 seconds away, he comes forward here with his initial army, what's that mine going off on, Balins, oh five Balins, that's so unlucky for life! A lot more Bane's on the way, and he wants to hold on another 15 seconds or something. He's got no creep spread to work with, and that's allowed Cast to just walk straight up to his opponent's third base. Another huge uh, mine hit here, and here we go. Life's just going to come forward. Slow Bane is the Bane of Speed. Hicks in right now. Can he clean this up? Well, he severely lowered the number of Marines. Cast might just get turned around. It's 1-1 against 1-1 for a few seconds. This is actually the one time in window Cast doesn't have. Um, this time in window right now where... He, he, you know, he waited another 30 seconds, it's 2-2 two, two against 1-1, one, one, instead of 1-1 one, one against 1-1, one, one. so, doesn't quite take advantage of that opportunity there, and um, these mines are most likely going to start falling down here now, uh, one going to go off there, uh, but the rest do get cleaned out, so, Life um, cleans up the mines, uh, the supplies fairly even, because has so much money, if he could spend the rest of his money, this game would probably have been over already, um, you know, reinforcements coming in, his life had time to get Balins in, He's struggling because he doesn't have the money to actually start 2-2. Two, two. So he's kind of just got to sit here and just keep on defending with basically just Ling Bane and the few Mutalisks that are around. Uh, Cass actually picks up there, drops on the low ground, we'll get a few units picked, uh, we'll pick off a few units for free here basically. And um, just sitting on this high ground, these Mutalisks are going to come around and uh, head in towards this third base. Ah, the bunker's there though, it's full and oh, the forehead is absolutely huge! The Mutalisks take such a shot! And uh, they have to be very careful about where they're heading now. Uh, Cass is 35 supply ahead, and I mean, he's just good. I mean, I mean, 35 supply ahead. His free free is as far as long as life's 2-2, two -two, and upgrades are so, so important. The fact life's actually clinging on so, so long is quite impressive as well, though. 
This drop in the main base is going to be annoying because life is completely out of position to deal with this. He did not expect it to come in here at all. His mirrors are out of position. His units have to come into well, to the main from the third. And Cass is going to strike towards the third base as well. And you know what? Life doesn't know it's coming. Why? Because he hasn't had the opportunity to set up his creep spread in this game. His uh, mirrors are going to come in. Everything's going to be cleaned out here. But Cass is just going to move in towards the third. And honestly, this might be a dead third base. It depends what he decides to target down. Well, mirrors and bins are going to start coming forward here. So uh, he will begin to. He will not actually kill off the third base. So life keeps that alive a little while longer as the mutilists come in to finish cleaning up. Uh, he loses the mutilist, but he actually takes a pretty efficient trade in the end. Uh, a single uh, medevac is able to save the four. Mines cleaned up once again as well. Life still trails in supply. He's uh, 42 drones against 64 SCVs. Uh, Cass has been pulling ahead in that workers killed thanks to uh, some of them drops. Um, well, I mean, coming in once again to this bunker, this time is Cass going to respond in time? Of course he is, and uh, Life's going to keep on committing to getting it down, but he loses so many Mullers in the process. Um, now he's got a little bit of a free reign over this base, but for how long? And the answer is not very, because Cass comes back, he gets ready to defend. Life's about to get a fourth base up, but I mean, he doesn't even really have drones to saturate. I mean, I guess he doesn't have anything in his main base to mine from, but he's barely saturated on two bases, so... Now uh, some bins are going to uh, run by here. They're going to try and get into this base before this bunker comes back up. So this is a pretty smart decision by life. He's uh, trying to use his opportunity. He will get. He will connect with a lot of these SCVs, and that's the kind of connection life needed to bring this back a little bit. That was about 16 workers we just saw go down. It was 14 before, so 13 workers killed in that Bailing connection. Mules are going to be met in the middle of the map by the Terran army, which is moving across here once again. Life's still clinging in, but 3-3 three, three is about to finish for our Terran player. 2-2 two, is just finished for life. So again here, Cass, he, he, he maintains the work, he maintains the lead. Some uh, Bane's got some good shots, uh, but then Bane's hit against the fours, and that's not so great. Um, he's, I mean, he's actually shutting down reinforcements really nicely with Ling Muta, and uh, Life might try and take this into a little bit of a base trade because he just can't fight the army straight up. Uh, some bin, uh, some units to the right hand side, they're going to get up, uh, just cleaned up really easily by this Terran army. So Ling's and Muta's will fall here. He's uh, Bane's, uh, sorry, Zergum's and Muta's in the main base. Doing a nice job, nice contaminate, slowing down the uh, un any units they can from coming out of these barracks. Cass turns around though, and I think that's a smart decision. He's killed off the third base of his opponent. If he can get back home and stabilize, I mean, he's going to be okay here. And um, and yeah, so um, ah, uh, Zergly, uh, sorry, Marine stem in here. The Muir's uh, taking a little bit of a hit to their numbers. Uh, the Zerglings are pretty much all being cleaned up, and Cass, all he has to do is get rid of these Muir's now. I mean, the third base, ooh, a mine goes off. I'm not even sure where that mine was. It looks like, I think life killed it off, that's why. Um, so, I mean, he's going to be able to clean up a couple more um, SCVs there. 28 drones to 29 SCVs. The problem is the standing armies. 3-3, free, free, 100 supply of Terran against 2-2, 30 supply of Zerg. Well, you don't have to be a physicist or rocket scientist to work that one out, do you? Um, you really do not. It's going to be hard for life, and he needs to make sure he just keeps up with the counterattacks, but I don't think he has the Mueller's numbers anymore. I mean, we're talking about how many Mueller's he's lost throughout the game. 22? He's got... Uh, he just, uh, he just, he's right there. He knows he can't do anything. He knows he's too far behind, and he taps out. And, oh my god, I said it at the start. I said if Cass can take down life, I reckon he can take us to an ace match. Let me start recording. In the upper right-hand corner, we have our blue Terran player from Cascade. He's brought us to the ace match. Can he take it home for the team who has been performing so, so well this season? Now it's time to find out. In the upper right-hand corner, it's Cass. In the lower left-hand corner, making his star tail debut. I, I guess so, because I guess he, 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 what, did he join Startail yesterday or two days ago? Or three days ago, I guess. I guess he hasn't played in anything since. Maybe, um, I guess he may have played, um, one of them daily cups that have been going on through the day lately. Um, but debut in the team league anyway, it's Startail alive. Oh my god, we've got a TVT. A TVT for an ace match. Oh, this cannot actually get better right now. This is going to be pretty... Pretty sweet. So, um, Alive versus Cass, what's going on? Well, right at the start here, we have Alive starting up a very much more aggressive opening than Cass, because Cass has, um, sorry, sorry, am I just being stupid? I, I'm being completely stupid. We've got both players going for gas first. Um, I'm being completely stupid, so ignore me. Both players are going, um, gas first, so, um, so yeah, quite exciting. And, uh, that means we've got a lot of, you know, a lot of possibilities here. TVT is one of the most 
versatile matchups at the start of um, at the start of the game because you can see so many different things and I mean you really really can you can see double gas openings single gas openings in this case we're going to see gas first openings which can still lead into single or double gas builds with a single gas you can generally get some hellions out reactor on your barracks get some marines and generally a medevac as well and go for some drop play um, whereas if you get a second gas, then you're going to be looking at going into them cloak banshees, maybe a tank push, maybe an early raven. So many different possibilities here at the start of this game. So let's see what's going to happen as we have a depot. Going to be coming up at the front for a live. It looks as though he's uh, coming down to the low ground here. Not sure what he exactly wants to do with this SV. Just scouting around, it would seem. Um, both players with their factory on the way, and there's the first second gas of the game. So it's going to be cast from down. The uh, second gas alive actually starts up a Reaper, okay, he's going to take a second gas as well, so both players are opting for a similar opening here. Um, the main difference is going to be that Alive is going to open with a Reaper from this fact uh, from this barracks, which is going to be kind of nice, because it's going to allow him to scout, which is going to be great. Um, and of course, from, you know, that's going to be information which he can gain basically for free, whereas if Cass wants that sim same kind of information, he's more than likely going to have to drop a scan for it, so... Starport's on the way for both players as well. We are actually going to see Hellions out of uh, Alive. So I'm intrigued to see where this goes next. Whether it's just a single Hellion, a couple of Hellions, uh, into Cloak Banshee, or, or what exactly it is. Maybe we don't see, you know, there's still a lot of possibilities in different directions this can go. And Cass, looking as though he is going to be going for the uh, Cloaks, the Banshee, as a tech lab comes up right next to that Starport on the factory. So looking as though we're going to see a Cloak Banshee coming out here in a moment or two. Reaper is uh, going to go up to the incorrect base to begin with. Uh, checks the top left before he goes to the top right. Not too much of an issue, the Hellion actually on the way over the map as well right now, as uh, Cass is trying to scout out with a Marine to see what's up, and uh, Hellion's actually going to spot that Marine heading down to the bottom right, but he actually, I don't think he was paying attention, I don't think he actually spotted that there, so... Um, you know, Alive can still get the information he needs, because he can still pop up into the main base and get whatever he needs. The Cloak comes down here for Cass, he starts up a reactor on his uh, factory, and uh, interested to see where this goes from here. Maybe some more Hellions alive, he is going to be using this starport just for the Raven. And also has a uh, factory on a reactor, so we're going to get some uh, Hellions out of there as well. He's been into this main base now, he's seen absolutely everything of Cass, so great scout from Alive to be able to see what's up and uh, what's happening with his opponent, what his opponent's getting up to. So, um, Barracks is going to swap onto this reactor here, back at home for Alive though, he's still got that factory on here, not really seen anything you know, actually come out of him just yet. Been saving up for a command center, which is coming up on the high ground, Cass going to go into a raven behind this, so... Um, yeah, his Banshee's probably not going to do all too much, considering there's a Raven on the way. Um, so he's probably not going to do too much with this Banshee. He actually keeps it at home for a moment. Uh, and now he's going to kind of fly past a Reaper. So, <clears throat> I mean, you know, Cass knew, uh, sorry, Alive knew that Cass was going for a Banshee. So that's not too much of a surprise here at all. And, um, you know, he's, he won't be shocked to see that Banshee right now. So Banshee on the way across the map. I mean, there's a Raven here, there's probably a Viking, yeah, Viking on the way for Alive, and he's got a second factory coming up, so we're going to see some mech out of Alive. Cass also expanding right now, now I would imagine we're going to see, um, well, he's, he's making a fair few Marines here, so could be anything still from Cass, Bio or Mech, and he's going to switch that tech, uh, factory on as a tech lab, so this could still be Bio here, um, because, I mean, you can open with tanks and then go Bio, it's a nice safe opening, you just play Marine tank, of course. Uh, this Banshee is going to get turned away very, very quickly, and uh, will be a uh, well, great control by Alive. He knows how to use this Viking so that he can keep track of the Banshee. Is it going to get away? We'll just get out of range of that uh, Raven, uh, which is a little bit of a shame. So Banshee will keep getting away here. Cass maybe needs to turn it around so that uh, Alive doesn't just uh, cut it off forever. Um, so these uh, air units start to go their separate ways. Uh, command Center is going to finish up on the low ground here for Cass. going to start morphing that into an orbital Command Center. Three SCVs transferring down there, the first tank coming out here, so Cass getting set up into his mid-game, going for a medevac now, and uh, I would imagine this, he's going to pick up 8 marines and start dropping. Um, still no signs of extra barracks, extra factories, or anything, so uh, we, we're still a little bit unkno unknown as to what exactly Cass is going to try to get up to here. Um, where the Raven, where's the Raven uh, Viking gone? The Viking's over here, I guess the Raven's just back at home, okay, there it is, so, I mean, Alive definitely going to be playing mech here. As we do see an engineering bay on the way up for Cass, so looking as though he will be heading up into this. Someone pinging in the game there as uh, four Hellions are going in. I assume they were pointing out that, you know, that space is pretty much, you know, completely open. Um, I wonder if Cass is getting an engineering bay in case of a counter cloak banshee. Um, just a delayed cloak banshee because he's still getting a third gas now and he's, he's getting so much gas where it's kind of getting to the point like, are you really going to add on engineering base, uh, so extra barracks from here? 
I'm doing a little bit unsure. Four aliens right now coming to this main base. And how much damage can they get done? Because Cass is completely out of position. Pulls away a whole bunch of SCVs straight away. But, I mean, already these aliens are doing a good job. And they can escape as well. Maybe be used another time. And that's what they're looking to do. Picks off another SCV build in the depot. Going to get a couple of Marines as well. And a uh, really nice trade by uh, Life here. Really great control with these Hellions. And a couple of... Um, uh, uh, yeah, he gets away free. Okay, I was going to say, I thought he was just going back a few too many times. But that was really nice in the end. A uh, nice trade. Resources lost pretty nicely in his favor. Eight workers killed. That actually puts him seven workers ahead right now. So that's pretty sweet. We have a Banshee at the front, which has been a little bit annoying. I don't know where the Viking is there. So Viking's on the way. Um, the Viking, Banshee's picked up a couple of kills, but nothing too significant. Oh, the Raven for Cass is going to get uh, intercepted here. Uh, just as he was trying to drop the Marines and tanks. Okay, now I see what build he's doing. He's doing the kind of Raven, the double drop thing. Um, Kind of weird though, because Cass is actually still going to be able to drop in his opponent's natural uh, and siege up. So, this is a little bit of a weird scenario here. Hellbats are going to be used to uh, kind of try and uh, help out with this. Um, these uh, SCVs have to retreat for now, I think. Oh, I mean, I would imagine this, uh, with the help of the Raven, I'd imagine this is going to be okay. Maybe, okay, he's just going to use the auto turrets. Uh, the medevacs go down, and everything's just going to die here. And, well, this wasn't even that hard to clean up for alive. He cleans up everything of this. And, uh, I mean, now all of these Marines are going to be going down as well, so... These Marines fall, and, um... And, well, what a, what a defense from alive doesn't even doesn't even look that hard for him. Now, Cass has got a faster third command center on the way up, as would be expected of the bio play, and he is going bio. That has now finally been confirmed for us, as he's going to be able to go into uh, stim pack and combat shields off of these extra barracks, which now have tech labs on them. Um, he should know he's playing against mech at this point. Uh, he's seen the hellbats. I mean, you know, he can pretty much assume if he hasn't seen the inside of the base, um, which he has as well, so he's, he knows it's mech, so... He knows he's playing against mech, so he's going to be able to add some marauders into his mixture here. We've got a huge air army already for alive. Six Vikings and a Raven. It's going to be very hard to do anything for Cass in terms of, you know, get, trying to get any kind of air dominance. This is a weird push from alive. I mean, yes, he took a bit, you know, he did an okay -ish fight. He took an okay -ish fight. He took out a lot of his opponent's units. Um, but to push with four Hellions and a couple of tanks. I mean, he's got air dominance, so it's not that scary for him. You know, it's, it's not, you know... It's not like it's risky for him at all. Go, ah, Cass loses his Raven before he can do anything about it. So that's a little bit of a shame. Um, I mean, it's very safe to do this because, you know, he's got the air dominance and, you know, what, what else is going to happen? Uh, he's going to pick off a depot, and of course, picking off a depot is better than not picking off a depot. So, you know, he doesn't lose anything by doing this. That depot falls now. Uh, these Vikings can actually pick off a medevac there, uh, flying over the top of Marines, and that's a little bit risky, but. Uh, here is going to pay off for now. Plus one on the way for both players in their respective, uh, you know, set of upgrades. Plus one uh, infantry weapons for Cass, which is a little behind the plus one air and vehicle weapons for Alive. Um, Alive, where's his third command center? So his third command center is still sitting in his main base. So he is going to be falling behind a little bit in terms of economy here. As um, ooh, a hellbat drop from Alive uh, turns some SCVs away for a couple of moments there. So Alive a little bit slower to be taking his third base, but again he's the mech in player. That doesn't matter. Um, Quite as much. Ooh, you know, he gets lost, uh, loses the medevac there, but does respond in time to keep it alive, which is quite nice. So, um, so yeah, these um, Hellbats are going to get healed up, and he might try and get back in there, go for another uh, attack with that very shortly. Uh, at the same time, we've got uh, a couple of Hellbat drops coming in towards the natural here, so. I mean, Alive's going to be just trying to be as aggressive as possible with this mech play while that homie's just going to be building up, taking this fake base, building up a really scary army that's going to be really hard to kind of defend against. Cass, uh, I'm intrigued to see how he decides to deal with the mech play. I mean, usually you either have to be hyper aggressive, which doesn't usually even uh, end up that well. Hold that for because we've got Hellbat drops coming in. And this is a massacre on. Oh my god, Cass is going to lose so many SCVs! Okay, so he lost a bunch of SCVs there. 30 workers killed so far in this game by Alive. At the same time, he's in the main base. And more, more, more damage is being done here. So Cass taking some pretty significant losses here. Uh, as uh, as he has to pull back with his main army. Cleans up the main base. Down, whoa, 35 workers killed. He's down 15 workers now. And I mean, for, both players have a third base. This is a problem. Now, the thing is, Cass isn't really abusing his ability to drop because... I mean, right now, Alive hasn't invested in any kind of uh, in-base defense. He hasn't left any units behind in his main base or his natural. So if Cass dropped, he could do a lot of damage. Right now, he's actually moving across the map, looking as though he wants to just try and take maybe a straight-up fight in the middle here. 
Uh, catch alive while he's moving across. He maybe doesn't even know that he's moving across. So, in fact, both players are going to bypass each other in the middle of the map. Now, in alive will be the first to know about this because he sees Caster's army coming with the uh, with the marine. These uh, these uh, and immediately he's actually going to turn around here. But Cast turns around as well. He's just fighting for map control more than anything else. Uh, another hellbat drop coming in there, and Cass still just struggling to uh, keep alive. He didn't lose any more workers there. Still on 35, and. Um, and well, uh, Cass is going to start sieging up, uh, live sieging up as well. Again, I'm just feeling like Cass is missing. I mean, just a single drop could start doing some major damage to Alive, a damage which he needs to do because Alive is ahead in the economy because of the damage he's done with his Hellbat drop. So I feel as though Cass is, at least needs to force them static defenses, but he's going to start getting into a bit of a trouble with some precision now. I actually think Cass should probably give up this base and move it over to this location instead because. I mean, it's sieged up, so, you know, he's not going to be able to mine from there for quite some time unless he can break this siege line, which is not going to be easy. I mean, what does he break it with? Does he just run into it? You can't just run into tanks. Again, I think he maybe has to bypass it or come around the back and come in from, you know, literally the front and back at the same time. As um, Hellbat's going to lift up to the high ground. This is such a frustrating position to be in for Cass. I mean, it's, it's one of those scenarios where, you know, you can't do anything other than kind of sit and try and break out of it. And you know whenever you try and break out of it, you're not going to be trading that well because that's just the nature of this contain. So what does he do? I, I still don't believe he's not dropping anything. You know, he's got a single marine across the map. He's just not abusing. I mean, he doesn't really have any medivacs, I guess. I guess that's his issue. He's going to end siege. I mean, he can get a really nice concave here. But, I mean, the question is, is it even going to be enough? So we've got three tanks in the back for alive. Which are still shelling away at this, uh, at this command. I don't understand why Cast doesn't just lift up and uh, take the other base. You know, if he does that, he's got a plenty of time to just sit back, wait, and break out of this. So he's coming in from literally a whole 180 degrees of uh, angles. Coming forward here with the Vikings, uh, PDD will go down. It helps out for a little while here. Cast just waiting. He will stim in now, and here we go. Is it going to be enough for our Blue Terran player to break out of this contain from the Korean? He's coming in. He's actually going to take down a lot of these units. The tanks are falling. But so are the units of Cast, and there's still a few tanks remaining here. And uh, he's got a little bit left, but uh, PDD actually soaks a shot from a Marauder. It's a very even game, but oh no! Cass has lost so many workers again! He's lost another 15 workers from the Hellbat drops! And that's, that's, that's bad! He's down, down 30 workers! Oh my god, I've just looked at the supplies! Cass is gonna GG! Oh, I, I don't believe I missed the Hellbat drops during that uh, fight. I mean, he cleaned it up, he broke out, but... He's just lost so much economy in the build-up to it! That doesn't matter! And GG! That's it! It's over. Star Teal take the series 4 to 3, and well, what an amazing set of games. Um, really glad we actually decided to cast that. So, guys, that is it for us tonight. Um, straight away, I'm just going to say thank you for watching. If you're going to leave us straight away, uh, then if you have enjoyed the show, do make sure to hit that follow button on the Twitch channel so you can see when we go live again in the future. Shout out to Super Groby007, who's uh, done that in the last uh, 20 minutes. And. Um, and yeah, you can check us out on Twitter as well, at SC2 underscore improve. See when we're going live for all of our events. And uh, you can also check out our sponsors, Team Redbloods, at, S at, uh, at Team Redbloods on Twitter and Facebook.com forward slash Team Redbloods. So, guys, I'm going to be... Uh, there are no more, more matches tonight, but we are going to be rebroadcasting. So rebroadcast is going to start after a quick musical, after a quick song. Uh, and then we're going to set the rebroadcast up. We're going to re be rebroadcasting um, SC2 Improve Summer League groups. Featuring players like Patience, Arthur, stuff like that. And um, then some SC2 ITL matches as well. So if you're looking for stuff to watch, we're going to be rebroadcasting. So do stick around. And if you can stick around for the ads, it'll take three minutes. It does, excuse me, it does help us out so much to put on more events. All of the ad revenue goes towards building the SC2 Improve events and leagues. And putting on more of them. So guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I've been rewarded. Hit those follow buttons. And uh, we will be rebroadcasting now. Um, after a quick song and the outro so guys thank you for tuning in and we'll see you all next time i don't know when i'll be streaming next but i'll keep you guys updated on twitter